I don't know if I can save your life this time. Russell. Russell, come on now. Hello and welcome back to Virginity Corner. I would like to take this time to talk about Donna Noble, the companion exit more generally, and the role of death in the TV drama. Spoilers for pretty much all of the revived era of Doctor Who, some of the classic era, and then also Torchwood, and it's a sin. Fans, and I include myself in this, are worried for Donna Noble, and what her fate will be at the end of the 60th anniversary specials, and not for no reason either. Donna had what I would say is the most tragic of the first Russell T Davies era companion exits. After a metacrisis event causes Donna's mind to merge with the Doctor's, the Doctor has to wipe her memory of him to save her life. This has the heartbreaking effect of reversing all of Donna's growth over her time with the Doctor, with her begging him to not make her go back to who she used to be. Don't make me go back. Doctor, please. <laughs> Please don't let me go back. Donna is an incredibly insecure character who, over the course of series four, insists that I'm nothing special. I'm a temp. I'm not even that. I'm nothing. But she finally gets to see as the falsehood it is at the end of Journey's End, making the heartbreak of her forgetting that and returning to a pre-Doctor life even harder. And it's not just the Metacrisis that makes Donna special. Series four continuously reinforces Donna's importance in the Doctor's life. She brings a much needed humanity to him and restrains him from his darker tendencies, most heavily shown in turn left. But you can also see it in the fires of Pompeii, with Donna convincing the Doctor just to save one family, or Planet of the Ood, where Donna helps the Doctor see the injustice that is the slavery of the Ood. Donna doesn't recognise any of this as her being special or important, but it absolutely is. And she doesn't get to remember any of that, or she dies. Or does she? Because Donna Noble is back in the 60th anniversary specials, and she appears to have her memories, and it remains to be seen how this is possible. Whether this is the toy makers meddling, or something else entirely, doesn't really matter at this point. What does matter is that in the main trailer for the specials, the Doctor is concerned for Donna's life, and we are concerned as well. Russell, if you harm her, we will come for you. But would Russell T Davies kill her off? The series is no stranger to the traumatic companion exit, but how likely is it that this is going to be the ending for her character in universe? I, I don't think it's that likely. The first Russell T Davies era doesn't feature a single companion death. Rose gets trapped in a parallel world, Captain Jack becomes immortal, and Martha gets to leave of her own accord, a rarity in the revival. Donna's exit we've already talked about. Let's talk about Rose for a second, because hers is yet another big, tragic companion exit, but one that forces the pair to be painfully separated. But for Russell T Davies, it was never an option to kill Rose in that moment, as he explains in the Doctor Who Confidential for Doomsday. I was never tempted to kill her. We're here to tell optimistic, positive stories about the human race. And you know, there are other science fiction stories in which you could have killed her, but Doctor Who is not about that. It's about survival and optimism, and it is never, ever, ever an option to kill her. And it's this ideology that permeates the companion exit in Doctor Who. The companions may get exits that are heartbreaking and tragic, but they still get to live complete and fulfilling lives. I don't know if optimism is the right word for these exits, but these endings certainly aren't pessimistic. And Russell is no stranger to killing characters off in his shows, whether that's Doctor Who or otherwise. Hell, the Doctor Who Confidential for Turn Left features a montage of people sacrificing themselves for the Doctor set to live and let die. Doctor Who Confidential is a weird show. But these aren't main characters. These are side characters who mostly pop in for an episode at most, in part to help give weight to the stakes of any given story. Most of the Torchwood crew dies, with Yanto Jones's death in Children of Earth being so traumatic there is still a prominent shrine dedicated to him in Cardiff. And the less said about Colin in It's a Sin, the better. 
But Torchwood and It's a Sin are not Doctor Who. They are far more cynical in tone and more geared towards adult viewing. Their stories aren't necessarily about the good in humanity or happy endings, whereas Doctor Who largely is. Part of the appeal and safety of a show like Doctor Who is that you're going in knowing that somehow the Doctor is going to save the day. And sometimes, just sometimes, everybody lives! And then came along Stephen Moffat. In the Stephen Moffat era, every single companion died. Amy and Rory got poked by a weeping angel, Clara got impaled by a raven, and Bill got a hole shot in her, then got converted into a Cyberman. Hell, River Song dies in her first ever appearance. But saying that every Moffat era companion dies feels just a little reductive, because Moffat is an asshole who found loopholes for all of them. Hell, Bill got two. She's a puddle, and she's glass. Sure. Amy and Rory get shot back in time by a weeping angel, but they'll still get to live full lives together in the past. Clara gets pulled out of her own death by the Doctor and gets to go on sapphic space adventures with Maisie Williams. Bill's consciousness gets pulled out of the Cyberman and she gets to go on sapphic space adventures with a puddle, and River goes to live in the Matrix. Not the Doctor Who Matrix, like the Matrix Matrix. Clara is the interesting one of the group, as here we get a reversal of Donna's ending. Clara in the Capaldi era is a mirror of the Doctor. Instead of tempering the Doctor's worst tendencies, she pushes him to go further, and in turn she goes further as she becomes more and more like the Doctor. This pushing each other leads to Clara's death, and the Doctor pulling Clara out of her own time stream against her will, and in such a way that would damage time altogether. And then, not content with letting the Time Lords return her to her death, he attempts to remove her memories of him so they won't be able to find her. Clara instead removes his memories of her, leaving to go and travel the universe with a shield ear before she decides to return to her death. This arc is divisive. I do think it works better on reappraisal than it did when it originally aired. When it originally aired, I hated Clara. Looking back now, I can really appreciate what they were doing and the way that this companion exit functions. That the Doctor is the one to forget their relationship, toxic as it may have been, is an interesting twist on the tragic companion exit, especially in comparison to Donna. Their reactions are largely the same, returning to their everyday lives, both clearly aware that they've forgotten something important, but unaware of whatever that is. Donna returning to her runaway bride self, and the Doctor returning to solitude at Christmas. And then, in the Chibnall era, as a nice change of pace from the constant loopholing of the Moffat era, every companion just gets to leave of their own free will. And this feels like a throwback to the classic era, as much of the Chibnall era is. In the classic era, the vast majority of companions do get to leave of their own free will except one that we will get to in a moment. So I would like to briefly touch on the first two companion exits, both from the second season of the show in Susan, Ian, and Barbara's departures. First, Susan, with her exit coming at the end of the Daleks' invasion of Earth, where she essentially gets married out of the show. This show isn't great to women, especially at this point in time, so we don't need to go into that too much. In this exit, Susan doesn't necessarily leave of her own accord, with the Doctor deciding for her, seeing how much she has fallen for David Campbell, a resistance fighter against the Daleks. And it's here that we get one of the most iconic moments of Hartnell's tenure in his speech farewell to Susan. And it's in this speech that the core idea of the Companion is vocalised by the Doctor. During all the years I've been taking care of you, you and the turn have been taking care of me. And sure, this era isn't the strongest in terms of its character development. In the actual stories, this isn't the clearest, but the idea is at least being floated. And it's also here that we get the second core idea that I've been discussing around the companion exit being spoken. Just go forward in all your beliefs and prove to me that I am not mistaken in mine. That the characters are forever changed by their adventures with the Doctor, and that after they leave, they get the chance to help continue to make the world a better place without the Doctor being there. And then Barbara and Ian is where we get a real sense of the more emotional impact of the companion exit on the Doctor, because for as much as the companions rely on the Doctor, the Doctor also relies on them. Because when Barbara and Ian float the idea of leaving at the end of the chase, Hartnell's Doctor explodes, using the Dardis being an unsafe form of time travel as an excuse for his rage. And yes, the Dalek timeship is called a Dardis. This isn't a serious show. The Doctor, having just recently said goodbye to his granddaughter, now has to say goodbye to his other original companions, and he's not ready for that. I think this is genuinely one of the most brilliant bits of emotion of the Hartnell era, with the scene really capturing the heart of people who don't know how to say goodbye, instead turning to anger towards each other because they don't know what else to do. 
that this is the Doctor learning to say goodbye sets him up for the rest of the classic era, with the companions leaving largely of their own accord, with one notable exception. Of the revival era, no companion has truly died, the writers have just kind of wriggled around it, and I think that's for the best. Taking the show as a whole, only one companion has truly died, and that's Adric. Adric was a companion of the 4th and 5th Doctors. He wasn't well received by either the public or even the cast, with Tom Baker even suggesting that he should have been mute. Ultimately, Adric would die in the events of the season 19 episode Earthshock, in which he died failing to prevent a freighter from crashing into the Earth after a Cyberman shot out the controls. This crash would be the meteor that killed the dinosaurs, but that's just a tangential thing. Oh, and then time flight happens, but we don't we don't need to talk about time flight. The main thing is that this death was a major shock to the system, and it's a story beat that still works to this day. For one, Earthshock puts real work into making you finally like Adric as a character. That he is the first and only character to die, especially after the effort was put in, makes the moment really pack a punch. This is only heightened by the final shot of Adric's broken star held silently over the end credits. Doctor Who has not done this again. Chameleon also dies, I guess, but you know, he's Chameleon, and no one gives a shit about Chameleon. Also, there's a Perry death fake out, but you know, she gets married off later, so again, largely irrelevant. That Doctor Who hasn't done this again could be cause for concern for Donna. Are we overdue a proper companion death? I certainly hope not, and I don't think that'll be the case. As we've already said, killing companions isn't something that Russell T Davies really believes should be a possibility within Doctor Who. And sure, Adric and Chameleon do die, but Donna isn't Adric or Chameleon. Donna is one of the most beloved companions in all of Doctor Who. If Russell kills her off, he has a riot on his hands. But at the same time, that makes her potential death hit harder than anything that has come before. But it's the 60th, it's a celebration, we're about to start a bright new era, we can't start that with heartbreak. Can we? I can't see it, I think whatever happens is probably going to be traumatic as hell, but I can't see it being fatal. That being said, a major companion death has probably been a long time coming, so the potential for pain is there. The death of a major character is an easy, and some would say cheap, opportunity for drama. A lot of lesser shows would use death as an easy out for these characters, an easy way to give these endings the heartbreak they often want. But Doctor Who rarely goes for the cheap and easy option in its writing. It's a show in which the main character can never really die, so death doesn't hold the same kind of weight as it does in other shows. And the Doctor Who universe is endlessly creative. There are a hundred ways to rip a companion from the Doctor in a way that'll break your heart. But death is death. You can kill someone in a million creative ways, but the outcome will remain the same regardless of the method. And the Doctor Who creative team knows this. From separation across dimensions, to the memory wipe, to being converted into a Cyberman, the writers know the exact way to make you feel as bad as possible while still allowing these characters to live on, albeit without the Doctor. I very much hope that Donna Noble gets to have her happy ending, after 15 years of not knowing what happened and not knowing the person that she became. Getting to let her have her memories back, however that may happen, would be lovely, especially considering that she's a mother now. If Russell T Davies does decide to kill off Donna, you know, the man's a good writer, I trust him to do a good job of it. You know, I hope that's not the case as a Donna fan, but only time will tell. For now, I will just live in the delusion that she will be alright, and if not, I, I will cry, I guess. But what do you think is going to happen? And on the rare off chance that you're watching this after the giggle has aired, please tell me how wrong I was, I guess. <laughs>